Thank you. Yes, Ms. Reed. Uh, Madam Chairman, I mentioned to you in the committee meeting and some of the other town councilors may not have known uh, that the origin of the funds were because of a proactive position on the part of the superintendent uh, to achieve these funds. And so that's why I am very much in favor of uh, the request to use the money specifically for those purposes, which is to make our buildings better. So, thank you. Thank you. I'd like a motion, please, so we can have discussion. Madam Chairman? Yes, sir. I move that we so allocate funds uh, under A and B as presented. Sir. Sure. Thank you. Councilor Jordan? Oh, I just rested my arm. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any further discussions with this? All those in favor? All those opposed? Six to one. If they had wanted, I made my statement, if they would wanted the money, I wanted it in the last budget. Okay, we will go back to item 55, which is to consider establishing a building committee for improvements to the Cape Elizabeth Middle School and take any necessary action. Connie, I believe you're on again. Get my reading glasses <laughs> on. Um, okay, uh, going back to the need for a building committee, I think it's really important to involve the town council in this discussion at this point. Uh, we certainly want you to be aware of our discussions. Uh, we are focusing on the middle school at this point, although I am uh, going to be, I plan to be back uh, at your October meeting with a, an application for Pond Cove Special Project. I did tell you, just to refresh your memory, a year ago that that's the way we would probably be doing this. We would splinter out one for state applications for the uh, middle school and then try under the other rubric that the state has known as special project which is 8,000 square feet so I just want to be you know very clear that we have ongoing problems here and that we will be developing a plan of attack of how we're actually going to be dealing with these that I would anticipate being anywhere from three to five years in duration so that this building committee will be focusing on the middle school but I would certainly want to make it uh, perfectly clear that you understand that there are related issues uh, but the middle school is clearly our priority for a variety of reasons uh, we had a discussion the school board had a discussion as to the composition and these are suggestions that I've discussed with the town manager and he has drawn it up um, to give you some guidance for discussion and nothing here is carved in concrete uh, we simply want to have a representative body together Okay, thank you very much. Is there anybody else connected with the schools who would like to comment? Mr. Greer. I'm Charlie Greer and I'm ch presently chairman of the school board. Uh, there was discussion on numbers um, to make a uh, committee manageable. As a rule, most town committees are, are seven in number, but because of the the magnitude of this kind of building when you're looking at a six million dollar project we felt that the amount of time commitment and the magnitude of the the expense expense involved that it may be a committee of nine people would be more representative of the community and um, would allow for more involvement and uh, we felt that to make it fair that it <laughs> it, because we are a one town concept that both both the school board and the town council be representative as along along with um, members of the community because we had expanded from seven to nine that we felt two school board members and two town council members representative of both of our bodies and the other five members coming from the community two to be selected by the town council two to be selected by the school board and the chairman to be selected by the chairs of both committees. Um, there has been interest on the school board for two people to 
to be represented in. Okay. That, I'm glad you said that because that was one of my questions to you. A quest, in looking this over, a question came to my mind. It's spelled out how the town council would choose its um, representatives from the public. We would use our appointments process. It is not specifically as spelled out for the school board. I need to run something by you and see how you would feel about it. If we had all applications coming through the town council's um, appointments committee process and have school board members sit in with our appointments committee, with the town council appointments committee to hear, to help interview all who apply and then can say the you know, school board can appoint two who go through that process and the town council can appoint two to, who go through that process. I'm very concerned that it be a equally public process on both sides and I think that is one way to accomplish it. The school board so wish to use the town's process. Terrific. Okay. Thank you. Do you have any questions for the chairman while he's standing up here? I just, Charlie, I have a, just a couple of questions as uh, chair of the, of the uh, appointments committee for the council this year. Um, I don't feel strongly one way or another, but, but nine, nine people are um, a lot of people. And I'm just curious, do we have uh, knowledge when we had the building committee formed for the high school? I, Councilor Jordan, you were on that committee, is that correct? Do you recall whether there were seven or nine or 20 people involved at that point? There wasn't 20, but I think there's is either seven or nine. I think it was nine. Do we know? That could be. Other, other towns, for example, Gorham's going through a referendum for their building. Are they nine or seven? They're nine. Okay, so there's, there's, it sounds like there is precedent uh, set then for having a little larger. I don't really want to scare anyone away, but there would be a considerable amount of time commitment yeah. to anyone who, but I think the, the benefits of what would result from that would impact and you have spoken among the, um, the school board members and uh, you are confident that you have uh, two of your membership who are very interested in serving on this committee. Yes, we do. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Councilor Cogshaw. I was wondering if there was some sort of a time frame that has been discussed at all, a preliminary report, a final report. It's not a good idea to appoint a committee and, not, and just give them an open-ended that could, that could be the charge of, that would be put forth at the first meeting. Of, Have you discussed what would be a reasonable time frame? No, we haven't, because we essentially wanted to, to come to agreement with the town council as far as setting up a committee. The school board will be meeting tomorrow night and will act upon whatever your decision is this evening. Because usually when we do establish a committee, we do have that as part of the, part of the motion. <laughs> I probably have thought about the time frame. We have not discussed it as in, in an open board meeting, but if you're asking me as superintendent, mm -hmm. uh, frankly, one of the things that I think would make sense is to put um, a target for decision as to whether we want to go out to a referendum in May. Uh, that's a tight timeline. And I'd like to see a building committee get together and at least lay that out as uh, a what if. Um, frankly, um, I'm driven by my concern about the condition of that building and what I know is a years long process for us to make improvements. So I'd like to, um, and again, I don't want to, to uh, we're having kind of a meeting here and then a meeting tomorrow <laughs> night, but since you've asked the question, I think it's only fair to say I do believe this is a community issue that has to be faced squarely. Um, there may well be good reasons why we don't want to do that, but I think the committee ought to be uh, asked to help make that decision. So you're saying by June 1st? Mm -hmm. You like it sure, earlier? No. You like May 1st? Well, uh, yeah, I think the decision, if, if the, uh, if I, you know, we spent a year establishing the need. It's been That's a year right. since then as we have That's tried right. to deal with our immediate space problems. You are certainly aware that we made a decision to move the kindergarten to the high school, which maximized what the community, I think, saw as unused space that does allow us, as I said before, we do have the square footage and all of the state applications require us to take the cumulative square footage of all three buildings 
add up the number of kids you have and say, do you have enough square footage to put them? The fact that it's inadequate program-wise and as far as the general uh, comfort level of the building and so forth um, is really uh, considered a local problem. So I'm, I'm just concerned because I've been through this and I know how many years it takes. Yeah. before you walk in the building. You've got DEP reviews, you've got all kinds of things that uh, before you can put a shovel in the ground and we also in this community have a major consideration that this building committee has to be part of looking at and that is where are the kids going to go to school. Uh, you cannot just start major renovation. The little bit of renovation that was needed to put the kindergarten in uh, the high school took all summer which if anybody is unaware of how those things have to go, uh, that's a very good indication of how there's absolutely no way we're going to be able to tear out the entire heating system in the middle school, replace four or five whole window wall systems to say nothing about the electrical plumbing systems and some more aesthetic issues in a summer or even a series of summers. So we're not just talking about thinking about a building project, we're talking about a whole logistical educational plan here for the next three to five years, depending on when the community decides to act. If my understanding is that the intent is for this to go to referendum in May when we vote for school board and council members, is that? Oh, I would say that's a decision. I mean, I didn't mean okay, to if, if that I'm the trying to work board. on the time frame. If that is the time frame, then the, we have to have time for the ballots to be printed nomination papers for those two positions have to be in 35 days before the election. The election is May 4th. The nomination papers and all have to be in by March 30th. That's your 35 days. So I would, if you want to do it then, you need something ready for referendum by, Mar by mid-March, which is an extremely tight time frame. Six months. Does this project involve looking at alternatives? We, we, uh, or has that been done? Council Delbert, you were not on the on the council last year when we re reported on about 12. I mean, they're not all in the report. Uh, there were two or three additional alternatives to those. Okay. So I think that we are expecting to pick up where we left off. Yeah, we'd have to have something on the council agenda to set it to referendum on the March council agenda, which is March 8th. I'm discovering. So we you need something by the end of February. That that doesn't sound I've got some experience with doing the time frames for construction projects and that doesn't sound very feasible for the planning that we've it got did. a lot of good groundwork done That's in what true. has been done before, but I think to get a new committee up to speed and generate that kind of information. Council Chapel, I'm gonna ask for you know, you've worked on a committee recently that went through some of the same process that I imagine this building committee will go through. Do you have any feel for the feasibility of that kind of time frame? It's pretty quick, my way of thinking. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, it all depends on how much work, I believe, has been di done prior that they have to work with. Therefore, this uh, committee, when it's appointed, has a great deal of work and not starting from ground zero. Mm -hmm. Uh, I believe you've got architectural drawings and so forth that have been prepared, maybe not the ones you're going to use, but you've got to start. That's correct. We have uh, various diagrammatic things. We do not have concept design. Yeah. So that gives you an entirely different time frame. It probably can be done for me. Councilor Cogshell. What about the November election? You mean the following November? A year from this November. Right. A year from this, this November. Is, I mean, th these are decisions that the board and this building committee will have to make. I'm simply responding out of, I guess, my sense of urgency mm -hmm. not to lose the opportunity to publicly state my own sense of urgency. I'm not going to make that decision, certainly not unilaterally. I'll make a recommendation, but not. it's not my decision to make. Well, we were just talking about when the referendum would go to public vote, mm -hmm. and she was talking about the May election mm -hmm. but there is also one in November That's which correct. would still meet your May 1st criteria well mm -hmm. uh, I I just wanted to state that those are I agree with uh, with Charlie that we obviously have to ask um, get the group together meet with them and lay out uh, this kind of need make sure that everybody that's there 
either has their memory refreshed or gets new information and um, discuss it and see what in fact is feasible and obviously we will do some research and come back but I didn't want you to think this is something we're talking about two years down the road. I think we understand the urgency. Before that, go ahead, Councilor Jordan. When you, Councilor Karcher, when you said November, this November? No. A year, a year from this November. Yeah. Yes. They, they do have a, a real tight schedule in, sh in shooting for the May one, but as I understand, some of the work has been done, and I should think that if for my two cents uh, they would shoot for that target date and if they finally get too deep into it then the anything you do is extend it to them another election and maybe November will have a special one but I would want to uh, under the conditions to shoot for the dates that you have line set out and uh, if they get so deep into it and they find out that they uh, aren't going to meet that date, then we'll just have to extend it. Any more discussion on the time frame issue? Okay, I think you've heard some comments from the council. I have a very strong concern with the language in the committee purpose, which currently is proposed to read the purpose of the committee is to study alternative options for improvements to the Cape Elizabeth Middle School to recommend a construction plan and budget to the school board and town council and to assist the superintendent of schools with advice on specific construction related decisions. I so very much would like to see this include a master plan for the school site. We're getting very building specific here. We've set I think this council has seen, has helped set and seen the fruits of a good precedent in the master plan that we had drawn up for Fort Williams. The concern at that time was that things were being done piecemeal and not in a coordinated fashion. And it may be that that's in the thinking behind this setup, but you need to be t looking at more than, I don't consider the bus garage as part of the middle school you folks made. I think that is part of that campus, a, very, a part that's in very close proximity to the middle school. You've got your parking issues and such. I want it to come together as a package and not be done piecemeal. And I think that is very, very important. And I would like to see some words to that effect in the committee purpose. I would suggest that if you're looking for a master plan, you're not looking for me. That's right. I would rather take some extra time and do it overall. I, I understand the urgency that is being presented to us. I really want to make sure it's all going to fit together properly and not come back with something for Pond Cove that, oh, it's not going to work because we didn't think of that when we were doing the middle school. Okay. Well, that's one of the reasons I mentioned Pond Cove. Uh, the report itself, I think, does address all three buildings. Um, and in fact, it, uh, it is impossible to deal with just a middle school, and that's why I wanted to make sure that although the, this target is a middle school, it may be um, that it is uh, more, I, I'm not really sure. Again, I'd like to have to get into the process with the building committee and, and have a group of people really look at just that issue. Perhaps we ought to be talking about a combined Pond Cove and Middle School building project. I mean, for instance, that report does absolutely look at all three buildings because a major part of that report was looking at the projected enrollments, where the kids were. We, some of those options were the possibilities of having, for instance, a six-year high school or at least using the high school site for six grades. We looked at it for using it for five grades. We looked at the practical implications that we couldn't accommodate the 650 or more students that are in the pipeline in the high school uh, with any degree of comfort would probably need some additions and so on. That's all part of that study. Pond Cove was looked at extensively from the standpoint of how much addition do we need. We, all, we know what we need for Pond Cove, again, not to the concept design stage, but as far as the numbers of classrooms, the replacement of the uh, portable structure, the issue of uh, we went we looked extensively at some 
options for Pond Cove that we felt would oversaturate that building, which is one of the reasons with the current enrollment we made the choice to put the kindergarten in another site to allow us to have a building that will hold a certain number but not to oversaturate it. Um, we have not, of course, studied <clears throat> the uh, soils in site. We're assuming that we will not run into deep problems there because, in fact, we have buildings standing. Uh, the sketch that we have uh, that I think I brought to the council, but I've kind of forgotten at this point, did include parking, for instance, the middle school project. One of the reasons why we are, are suggesting a combination of new building renovation uh, is A, to provide a second parking lot on the far side of what would be the proposed new part of that structure, and to se obviously separate and improve the whole parking situation. Uh, we also have discussed moving the uh, parking, excuse me, the bus garage, uh, somewhere in the vicinity of the maintenance uh, garage and uh, dealing with a relocation um, consolidation issue. That again is all part of the plan, it was all discussed at one point. And the, um, the, we have looked at the fields, we have not done any extensive uh, work in that, but we certainly have looked at them. And we've also looked at some of the uh, basic maintenance needs at the high school, 20 year old building. We're looking at the windows that do need some replacement and so forth. Uh, we've had an extensive handicap access report done on all, uh, well, in great detail on two buildings, not as much detail on Pond Cove, and we are working with the town manager and other um, municipal authorities to take a look at that. So uh, actually, because we only have the three buildings in one campus, we have already, that's exactly the way we approached this study. There was no way you could do one building. You could not get a long-range sense of how you could put the number of children we have into the buildings that we have, renovate them, and so forth, without looking at all three buildings. So I think that there's been a, a fair amount of that. Now, I'd be happy to reword this in any way that would make that clearer, uh, but I just want to make the point that uh, we found it impossible to talk about one building. It just well, it doesn't work, and that's why I have a little concern about saying middle school, but it's because we splintered off middle school, went to the state with 36 on a list of 56, and the state is funding four. And as I said before, the main two main reasons. One, we do not have kids out in portables. What few portables we have in comparison to other towns are connected and so on. Uh, and two, uh, it's mostly renovation, and renovation is a local issue. Connie, would you say that you have in that there has been developed a master plan for what you're planning to do on the entire school campus? Yes. Okay, then the it's Lisa rudiment, rudimentary outlines of that. I want to keep saying we're not a concept design, but we have certainly looked at such issues as how many rooms, classrooms is it appropriate to add to Pond Cove before you oversaturate that site, given where it is and we're not going to move the building. Uh, how many classrooms do we expect we need for the population we have 5A. That's one of the reasons, of course, that the board made the choices last spring to go back to the 5A configuration. We knew that that was essentially what we could put on that site. Mm -hmm. I mean, those, that's all part of that master study that we've already done. I just, I need to be reassured that all these improvements to the middle school are going to be done within that master concept. Well, and I want, I, I would feel much more comfortable if that kind of language were included. That's fine. And a lot of this is history, too. Sure. Well, whatever you want to, I just want to get started. I understand. <laughs> That's my concern. <laughs> Let the labor pains begin. Yes, I, I just know how long it takes. And I think Mr. McGovern is trying to come up with some language to satisfy that concern. Any other comments, questions from counselors? So your big concern is just says middle school. Is that your big concern? It just says the middle school. I want to make sure that the members of the building committee and the general public are aware that this is being done within a larger framework. And I think that is of utmost importance. The framework is being. I can see a point there. Somebody could get bogged down on just the one school, but I think if they could add the other schools to it, 
Pond Cove Middle School, High School? I think we may, you know, as Connie pointed out, we may get into a joint middle school Pond Cove situation. It makes sense to do two at one time. And if that's the most reasonable way to do it, it would be sensible for the committee to proceed along those lines. Mr. McGovern, do you yeah, have I, some help for us? I just added a sentence at the end. The committee shall also review all construction issues in the context of the master plan for the school campus. Slowly. Hmm? Slowly. <laughs> the, the committee shall also review all construction issues in the context of the master plan for the school campus. Sounds good. Thank you. I appreciate it. All in favor? Everybody set with that revision to the proposed language? We need a motion. We need a motion. So moved. Second. Councilor Cogshaw. Would you be willing to uh, amend that to include a tentative deadline of May 1st? Tentative? Tentative. That's okay. Is that satisfactory? Tentative second. Anything. <laughs> tentative is. Right. With a tentative deadline. deadline of May 1st. Okay. All those in favor? All opposed? Unanimous, 7 0. Thank you very much. The town looks forward to working with the school in this. Excuse me, Adam. I thought you made the deadline before May 1st. The deadline. For if they wanted to be on, if they wanted to May referendum, this okay. does not get them on a referendum in May. My understanding. They understand that. I understand I, that. I, I think that I will get back to you, and, and you'll have representation, so we'll keep in touch. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. Next item on our agenda is number 57 to consider the annual leases for portable classrooms and take any necessary action. Mr. McGovern? Yeah, these are uh, in accordance with the budget and in accordance with uh, regulations of the, the main Department of Education and Cultural Services that in order to provide reimbursement at the reimbursement rate, leases need to be in place. This, and these leases, as you noted, for the current fiscal year. Yes. I'd like a motion, please. You got it. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Yes, I resolve. All those opposed, 7 0. Hard to count that. Fast. Thank you. Item number 58 to consider authorizing the disposal of two Jeeps and take any necessary action. Mr. McGovern? Yes, we have two Jeeps. One, uh, date unknown, maybe known to the former. Director of Civil Defense. Another one uh, is from 1955. Uh, they're in very, very poor condition. Uh, one has parts missing. It uh, doesn't have a spare tire, which is minor. It uh, doesn't have any of the safety features that a, that a vehicle now needs to have. Uh, the second one, uh, the running condition is unknown as the vehicle has to be towed with the front end lifted, parts missing, front wheel, steering wheel, on and on and on. It's been, is Bob Malley says cannibalize to keep the other one going. Uh, we would like to junk these vehicles. Uh, we do not wish to sell them. We feel that they're, they're a significant liability uh, and uh, we don't want to turn that liability over to anyone else or in any way be responsible for what could be uh, a dangerous situation. So I would like authorization uh, to scrap them and to receive the proceeds from the scrapping and to have th those proceeds uh, go into the general fund. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Councilor Pearson. Larry. Uh, Chairman McLaughlin. Uh, is there any indication what those would receive scrap value? I don't know. It's, I would guess, uh, not much more than a hundred dollars and you, you don't think it's worth uh, just uh, going with some of the publications of Jeep enthusiasts to see if anyone wants to throw some dollars for them not with the scrap no not with the condition of these Jeeps and uh, again I, w I would not want to in any way uh, transfer the liability to someone else because uh, liability really can't be transferred 
Yes, if I may, Madam Chairman. Council yes, Stewart. but if they want to buy them and what have you, isn't that their responsibility out there? Are you still responsible for them if something happens? Under the Lemon Law. Lemon Law? I never uh, heard of it. There, there is a, you know, I'm not totally familiar with it, but uh, you know, I think there's, there's, a, there's a legal responsibility. I think there's also a, you know, a moral responsibility to make sure that we're not passing something on that someone might bring out onto a road. And, uh, I think it was a... a Manager, if it was a uh, two people like you and I, you could sell it to me as is, and we could get away with it. But where the town is the official mm -hmm. owner of those mm -hmm. vehicles yeah. by grant from the federal government, mm -hmm. why you better not be selling them to anybody unless you're willing to stand behind them. Yeah, you can see we tried to give them back to the federal government or the state. <laughs> they said no, thank you. <laughs> That was our original understanding of the law, as it became Jesus. surplus, we had to offer them. Because <laughs> if I could get away with it, I'd take one and just park it down in my driveway for sentimental reasons. Because we got the first one in 1958. <laughs> we can tow it down there for you. Haul it on the trailer. I put it. I paint it all up, beautiful, you know. And never drive it. No, no, no permit. Just have it for a monument. Yes, Priscilla has talked to some of us about that, sir. <laughs> Move the question. All those in favor? All those opposed? Six to one. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Item number 59. <laughs> to consider confirming the appointment of a town engineer and take any necessary action. I have added a word to that as it's listed on your agenda. It's the word confirming. Mr. McGovern? Yes, as the enclosed material uh, indicates, I'd like to recommend that you confirm Frederick E. Morin as our town engineer. Fred uh, has been a longtime employee of the firm of T.Y. Lynn International. Uh, he was interviewed for this position as well as uh, individuals from six other firms as, long as, as well as with other folks in, in that firm. We had a, uh, a committee consisting of Bob Malley, uh, Maureen O'Meara, Judy Lardner, a member of the planning board, Nat Clifford, a citizen with engineering experience. Uh, who currently is uh, working for the Portland Water District. Uh, and uh, I would hope that you would confirm, Mr. Moore. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? All those opposed? Thank you, 7 0. Item number 60 is to consider approving the Maine Municipal Association ballot and designating a voting delegate to the Maine Municipal Association convention and take any necessary action. You have in your packet a copy of the ballot being presented by MMA for its election of officers for the 1992-1993 year. I promised Mr. McGovern I had to mention some of the names on the ballot. I'll mention just one. Um, being presented for president for a one-year term of MMA is Michael McGovern from Cape Elizabeth. We certainly hope we'll Here, here. <laughs> Very good representation as we have in the past for you being on your involvement in that. We yeah, appreciate your willingness to do that and hope we will show our council support of you in that position. We also need to designate a voting delegate. Um, Councilor Dahlbeck, do you expect to be in attendance on Thursday, October, no, I, I whatever? Have a conflict on the uh, Thursday. I you think have it is. Okay. As far as we could tell from the program, it looked like the voting was going to be on. We need I a think voting the delegate on Thursday. Is the Thursday. It's Thursday. Mm -hmm. Is there any other counselor who expects to be in attendance? See, what's the date? What Thursday, Thursday morning. Thursday, October 15th. I believe it's you know, October 15th. That's the day I noticed that. No, I, yes, I have a. You have a conflict. Health Care Finance Commission meeting that day. Okay. Is there any counselor who knows he'll be in attendance that day? Councilor Cogshaw, would you be willing to be the delegate? Okay. Could we have a motion to approve the ballot and designate Councilor Cogshaw, please? So moved. Second. All those in favor? All those opposed? 7 0. Thank you. I would like to look at taking two items out of order this evening. Item 61 would be in reference to a memo that was at your place when you arrived this evening. It concerns the malfunctioning 
of a disposal system at 9 Susan Road. I need a motion to do that. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Zero. What's this ice? Stuff? Heard that <laughs> After 10 o'clock, we have a different system. <laughs> Mr. McGovern, would you like to discuss this with us, please? Yes, the code enforcement officer made me aware today of a situation on at 9 Susan Road. There's a tenant living there, and they complained to the to Ernie McVeigh, the code enforcement officer, that the, that the sewer system was malfunctioning, specifically bubbling up uh, on the lawn. Uh, Ernie has been in contact with the owners of the property uh, who live out of state. They have given him assurances on several times that they were going to do something. Nothing has been done. Uh, the situation continues. Uh, we also understand that the, the property may soon be up for foreclosure. So I, I question the, uh, whether or not the property owners are, uh, are about to do anything. Uh, on the, the back of your sheet, or you're on your second page, is a proposed order, uh, which is under uh, state law, the municipal offices. Uh, can order to be remedied within 10 days. If it does not do so, uh, the staff could then go forward and see that hire someone to do it, uh, to make the correction, uh, and to uh, then uh, put a special tax assessment on the property to recover the cost. Thank you. Madam, Madam Chairman, I would move enactment of the abatement order as so described on the uh, memorandum here. Second, Matt. Thank you. Any discussion? Council Would this have to be done in two steps, Michael? As far as the special tax lien, or is there an automatic process uh, I, that follows? My, my belief is we'd need to gather together the cost and then formally have you assess the tax, or, or have whoever, and I'd have to recheck the state law, but it, it would have to get back and see what the actual costs were. If and then in the meantime the property is foreclosed upon, where are we in the process? We, I'd, I'd want to check with the attorney, but you know we would have a lien on the property before we had the lien and before. I, if we go in and I'm do the an work, attorney. we're paying the bill until yeah. there's money available, until we're reimbursed. That's the that's the end I don't know if we could get stuck in the middle. I'll uh, check into that. So for health reasons, we have to proceed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's so. Further discussion? All those in favor? Zero. The other matter, it's just something I needed to inform counselors about, and I could do it privately without an item if, uh, okay. yeah, if everyone needs to sign quite a few things for Debbie anyway. So. Please, you will be astounded how many things you have to sign tonight. Don't take your signing arms away. We have, again, citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. Seeing empty seats and no citizens, I'll assume nobody wants to take advantage of that. I'll move. We can. Second. Okay. All those in favor? 7 0. Thank you. Good evening.